from the News Channel 5 Network. This is the Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law News Hour, where we explore the many issues that arise due to aging, unexpected disability, and chronic illness. I'm your host, Tim Takis. And I'm Barbara McGinnis. In today's episode, we're going to talk about estate planning. We'll cover the basics briefly, and then we'll get into special circumstances with some of our special guests today. People that are experienced in not only estate planning, financial planning, taxes, and trusts. We'll look at it from several unique perspectives. These professionals have been working with Middle Tennesseans for many, many years. But before we get to that, let's start with the basics and talk about the fundamentals of estate planning. It sounds like an intimidating topic, but it's one that we all need to embrace. So joining us today is our elder care coordinator, one of our firm's elder care coordinator, Deborah King. And I'm going to be asking Deborah and Barbara some questions about, uh, basic questions about estate planning. So Barbara, let's first start out with a definition. What is an estate plan? Well, the first thing, Tim, people sometimes misunderstand the process of estate planning. They think of it as an event, something they can go and do, mark off their list of, now I've got that done. But really, it's, it's an evolving process. As we change in our lives, we may start with a real basic need to have some simple documents in place like powers of attorney mm -hmm. or an advance directive, maybe a will or a will substitute. But as our life changes and maybe those chronic illnesses creep in or a, a disability, whether it's myself or my spouse, our needs, for ch our needs change with estate planning. Mm -hmm. So people often think about and know that estate planning means how they want to take care of the disposition of their property or assets at death but what they often forget is that it's really important to plan for how, is, how are those assets and properties going to be managed while they're alive and how are the people that care about them going to step in and make uh, be their surrogate decision maker. So it's a process and it needs to take place over time. Right, a process, as we often say in our office, a process, not an event, right? Not an event. Right. So should everybody have an estate plan or is it just for people who have money or who, who, are, who typically needs one? Well, you know, I would say that everyone needs an estate right. plan. Everyone over um, the age of, of legal majority needs to start thinking about an estate plan. Now, their estate plans may look different that um, because it's a unique process, mm. which is part of the counsel with an attorney is making sure that that uh, state plan is uniquely suited for that individual and it's not just a cookie cutter approach that everybody gets the same thing. Um, estate planning for an, a younger couple may need to include wills mm -hmm. that name the guardian for their children. Right. After we get older and empty nesters, you know, that particular feature of an estate plan is not quite as important any longer. Right, right. So, w so when we think about estate planning or an estate plan, what documents are typically included? Well, some of the, the keystone elements are uh, a durable power of attorney with general powers, and sometimes those powers may need to be expanded. And again, that depends on the uniqueness of the individual situation an advanced directive or some type of health document. Uh, it could be a health care power of attorney. An outdated term in Tennessee is the living will, but people still recognize that and know what we're talking about. And then a will or a will substitute, like perhaps a living trust. Trusts come in all kinds of shapes and sizes too, depending on mm -hmm. the cir circumstances of um, the individual or the couple. Right. And we're certainly going to be talking a lot about trust over the course of the next hour. So, yeah. Um, so when people first come to our office, uh, they usually come in, you know, the with various situations. So describe what some of the most common estate planning scenarios that our clients bring to us. I think there's at least three big categories that we can think of. There's the people that um, 
they're they're coming in and they say it's time to get my fares in order that mm -hmm. you know hence mm -hmm. the ducks in a row thing they right. want to have some they feel like it's time to um, act like an adult so right. we need basic Folks always that come always in a good getting, thing for adults to do, yes. Uh -huh. People come in to get started with their estate planning. Then a, another big group of folks that come to see us are the folks that have had that change in health condition. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've just received a life-changing type diagnosis. And they like have Alzheimer's or other or sort exactly, of chronic Parkinson's illness. Or mm -hmm. something, you know. and, and they see this change and they and they get new worries in their life and mm -hmm. they come in with that another set of people that come in with a great deal of frequency um, a couple where one person has passed and so now this new widow or widower needs mm -hmm. to plan uniquely for being a single person again later mm -hmm. in life right. so there's all kinds of um, scenarios mm -hmm. so our yeah, and of course, as you know, we we see a lot of people that come in who already have estate plans in place. And so, are there some things that you see that maybe many of them are missing elements that are not there that maybe should be? Well, not everyone comes to us with documents, but a fair number of people do come with some sort of document. Perhaps they've outgrown it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've just moved, and they're wanting to do a, re a revision. Or, but. What's often missing is that um, the, the surrogate decision making in, in sort of a meaningful kind of way mm -hmm. where people really have an understanding of how that person wants to be cared for. Um, the other thing that they often worry more about how assets are going to be distributed at death than they do worry about how their assets are going to be managed or how their property will be managed during their, their life. Mm -hmm. So Deborah, now you're one of the firm's elder care coordinators, so what does an elder care coordinator do in a law firm, in an elder care law firm? Um, elder care coordinators help families manage their care across the long-term care continuum. Um, as we age, a lot of changes occur, and sometimes those changes necessitate changes in levels of care. So as an elder care in a law firm, we help families figure out where they're going to get the care, working with the attorneys and other people on the staff to help them understand how it's going to get paid for and getting their legal documents in place. Right. So you, you kind of bring in a, a, a unique perspective, uh, your, your, the care perspective to, a, to an elder care law firm. Um, so many people, I'm sure they think that care, personal care issues are really, and, and estate planning issues are not related. Not so, right? Not so at all. As Barbara said, as your situation changes, you need to evaluate your estate plan and look at what changes may need to have take place. Um, for example, if one spouse gets a diagnosis, as you just said, of an Alzheimer's or a Parkinson's, and their ability to make decisions changes, the well spouse may not want that person named as their decision maker and so that needs to be assessed as to what's the appropriate changes that need to be made. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, if there's a, a terminal illness, um, a lot of people want to make sure that their loved ones are cared for and their documents are in order in, so that when they die, when they pass, things will happen the way they'd like them to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. So are there risks of creating an estate plan without basically planning for those future care needs? I mean, you mentioned about like a spouse, you know, and we, we've seen, we see this from time to time where, a, a, let's say a spouse comes in and she's worried because her husband is, has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, but all of the documents that she has, that maybe they brought in where he's her power of attorney. And, and that just emphasizes what you said, that estate planning is a process and anytime there is a change in your situation, you need to re review your estate planning documents and talk to a professional. Uh, to see if changes need to be made, to see if there is something different that needs to be made, that everything is in order. Um, a lot of families do not plan for disability, as you said, they plan for death. And so mm -hmm. <clears throat> being able to manage your care if your 
spouse is not able to make decisions for you is real mm -hmm. important to have that in place. Um, also, as Barbara said, having those documents in place at an early age is important. Um, several times we've had families come in where they're not young, but they're mm -hmm. not old, mm -hmm. and we need to um, make sure that they have the appropriate documents and decision-making documents in place. So Barbara, just before we go to break, let me ask you a question. Why don't we just jump online and get these documents and, and know that we've got something? Is that a good idea? Um, rarely does it really uh, fit the needs for the for the clients and it's mostly because you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the right questions to ask. A lot of the documents can be quite good but it's the unique circumstances that are more difficult to plan for. Right. When we come back from break we're going to talk with two other industry experts and we'll be right back.